Hi guys, my name's Tracy. I am a senior consultant with ProServe and I'm here to talk to you today about do you really need an AWS KMS custom key store? Customers ask this question all the time and most times it's a case of ooh shiny syndrome, but we're gonna go over some use cases and decide whether or not they really need it. So first, we'll do a little bit of the agenda. So the agenda is gonna be how does this work? What is key, custom key store? How does it operate? What are the back end pieces? All the nitty gritty details that customers wanna know. And then we'll get into, do you really need it? So that's always the key point with customers is having that discussion. So first, cryptography. What is cryptography? Cryptography is taking plain text data, running it through some algorithms and some jumbledness and outputting ciphertext. Ciphertext is only decryptable by those that are authorized to do so, meaning nobody else is going to be able to read your data unless you've authorized them to have that access. Decrypting does the same in reverse, takes that ciphertext, runs it back through all the gobbledygook, all the encryption algorithms, outputs it in plain text, you now have human readable formats. So the question is, do you wanna manage that? Or do you want AWS to manage that for you? Encryption keys and key stores, all of that is very difficult to manage on your own. You have to worry about the security of the key store, the security of the HSMs or the hardware security modules that your keys are created on. You have to set up all of the proper physical controls in your database or wherever you're storing these HSMs. So there's a lot of detail in just problem solving and people managing that goes into this. Is it really worth it? You can otherwise let AWS KMS do this for you. We take care of all the management aspects. All you have to do is create your keys. So much easier. So this is how KMS works. Your applications reach out to KMS. They are authenticated and authorized through the AWS IAM policies or the AWS KMS key policies. You can use a combination of both. It is preferable to use key policies to manage your access because they are more restrictive um, and they give you a better grasp of who's actually accessing your keys. Custom Key Store uses instead of KMS's HSMs as the backing material to create all of your keys, it allows you to use a cloud HSM cluster of your own creation to create and store and house your keys. Now, native KMS right now is 140-2 level two validated for FIPS. It does have some options that are level three validated. So those are kind of the ones the customers are really curious about. Cloud HSM is a fully 140-2 level three validated HSM. A lot of customers, when they hear FIPS validation, they don't really verify what parts they need. They just automatically think Cloud HSM is the way they have to go. But it's super expensive. It's very cumbersome to manage. So if you really don't need it, your better option is just going straight with KMS and letting them manage it for you. Let's see. Oh, and one of the great parts, KMS now has asymmetric keys. So a lot of customers used to think Cloud HSM because they needed asymmetric keys for signing, code signing, file verification signing. A KMS now does that for you. You can create all those keys on backed HSMs that are validated, that are secured and monitored. If you ever have any questions about the security of all of these HSMs, you can go into Artifact and pull down all of the reports that verify all of the audits we've had. So you have the ability to create all of these asymmetric keys on KMS now. So you no longer have the need for an HSM. You can do RSA and EC keys, uh, the signing for the PKI infrastructure for codes, documents, timestamps, uh, key exchange inscription, proof of knowledge. It has a command line interface and same as regular KMS, all the keys are stored and generated in a FIPS validated shared HHM, HSM. So you don't really have the need to worry about working on your own HSMs. They get very cumbersome. Now, you'll have those customers. I want to have direct access to my own FIPS 140-2 level three HSM. 
It's a requirement by my company. I absolutely have to have it. You're going to get those customers. What's important is to understand why they need it. You need to ask the right questions. You don't just want to say, okay, great, we can give it to you because they're expensive. All HSMs, you want to have at least two in a cluster for high availability. So think of it, one HSM running 24 seven in US East one, it's about $32,000 a year. If you have a customer that's maybe a smaller business, not a massive bank, that's a lot of money. When you add in two, you're talking at least $64,000 a year. And that's if they just sit there and don't process anything. Once you throw in all the processing and the API calls and all the actual key management functions and cryptog cryptographic functions that happen, the bill just goes up. So Cloud HSM does manage uh, to simplify some of the management tasks of user management, backups, application integration. We automatically give you a cluster, so you can set up high availability with a simple click. We take care of the HSM maintenance. We make sure that the hardware itself, patches are updated. We will auto provision HSMs for you should one in your cluster go down. We make sure that there are backups automated for you daily, so you never have to worry about super large losses of key data. If you delete or add an HSM, it automatically triggers another backup. So you're pretty covered with that part. We do make them easy to use, which is a lot better than other companies or when you actually bring in an HSM hardware on site and you have to fully manage it yourself. Very cumbersome, very tricky. Um, SafeNet are our old cloud HSMs with Classic. If any of you guys ever use those, you know how tricky they can be. So we make things so much easier in version two that they're super simple to use, but they're still very costly. So you still wanna make sure your customer knows what they're getting into. So let's look at some differences between what KMS offers and what HSM offers. You know, we, we still have AES 256 keys, RSA encrypt, RSA sign and decrypt, ECC sign, KMS is on a shared HSM, Cloud HSM is a single tenant device. In the world of KMS, the HSMs are controlled and monitored by us. In Cloud HSM, the customer is responsible. Key access. With KMS, you control this by key policies, you control this by IAM policies. If you're using KMS to encrypt S3 buckets, you can use S3 bucket policies. It's really endless the level of restriction that you can put in place. With Cloud HSM, you have customer credentials. So you create a user. That user is the only one that has access to manage their keys. They can, however, share those keys with others, but there's no policies or anything in place to minimize access, to restrict. It's all up to that individual user. So KMS is also integrated with very large majority of the AWS services. It's a seamless integration. You go through the console, you go through the CLI, you're like, hey, I want this to be encrypted. Click a button, you're done. HSM, you don't have that object or you don't have that option. HSM it does not have integration with any AWS service on its own. They both have CLI, they both have SDK options, scalability, same as you would think, KMS is managed by AWS, HSM managed by the customer. It's up to you to add or remove HSMs from your cluster. It's up to you to make sure that the scalability is meeting your application load, Rotation is another one. A lot of customers really need to have key rotation. Best practices, you should do it at least once a year. Some customers also have the responsibility and requirements from their security department to do it every six months. Some even every three months. KMS, we will automatically do it for you once a year if you create a key in KMS. If you do BYOK where you import an external third-party key or you do custom key store, 
the responsibility to rotate is on you. Anything under a year is also responsibility owned by the customer. Same with HSM. Customer owns all of that. So now we have custom key store, kind of the best of both worlds. You get KMS's integration with all of the AWS services, but you get to have the option of owning the HSM that creates the keys. It's single tenant. You control the users. You control who has access to the rest of the HSM. You can use it for applications that maybe aren't in AWS that just have access to the, the VPC where it resides. So you have a bit more options. Um, all of the keys are gonna be generated on the HSM. All of the keys will be stored on the HSM. They won't leave the HSM device. Whenever KMS needs to make an encrypt or decrypt call, it reaches out to the HSM. So all the cryptographic operations happen on that HSM. Now, if you're doing something like encrypting an S3 bucket, then it operates the same. You point to the KMS key that you want to use and that HSM will create a data key pair. It passes it up to S3. S3 uses that to decrypt the object, just like normal KMS. The only difference is when you need to decrypt, it's another call to the HSM to decrypt the data key. So you have to think of that traffic back and forth. Do you want to just use KMS or do you want to also look at the traffic that's going to the HSM for all the cryptographic operations? Because remember, that adds to cost. KMS is also much cheaper. Every CMK is a dollar a month. You know, your regular API usage above the free tier, but it's a dollar. So if you have one CMK there and you never go over API usage, you're looking at $12 a year. If you have high availability HSM cluster set up, what did I say? 64,000 a year. I'd rather go with the dollar if I absolutely don't need an HSM. It just makes fiscal sense and makes management overhead sense that you just don't have to worry about that extra section. So what exactly is custom key store? When you're thinking about it, what, what benefit does it give me? So it gives you the benefit of having the HSM cluster we talked about. You have more control. You have more ability to create different types of keys. You can create keys that KMS will use, but also keys for other applications. It's a central repository. It makes your life a little bit easier if you have more need than just a simple KMS key. Um, you have the KMS endpoints, you have the tools and SDKs. So everything kind of works the same. You just have that HSM that you own completely in the background and no one else has access to it. So you're probably thinking, how does it really work? So we have an example. Isn't that neat? So S3 is my favorite example because it's super simple to understand. When you create an object in S3, you make a call out to KMS. KMS is gonna say, hey, I need a data key. In the KMS key store, custom key store, it's gonna reach out to HSM. It's gonna call that HSM and say, I need a data key pair. It's gonna use the CMK that you specified. It's gonna create you a data key pair. One is gonna be unencrypted. One is going to be encrypted. The unencrypted version is going to go to S3. S3 is going to use that with its own algorithm to encrypt the data file. The encrypted version of the data key sits in a bit along next to the actual object itself and just remains in storage that way. When you need to decrypt, the opposite happens. That encrypted data file is sent back to KMS. KMS forwards it onto the HSM, the HSM decrypts it, returns the plain text key, the key is sent back through the HSM to KMS, back up to S3, and the object is decrypted and the plain text is returned to you. So the only difference is instead of going to KMS-owned clusters of HSMs, it goes to your custom HSM 
So you have that extra traffic going through. There's no real difference in latency or anything like that. So there's no real difference your customer is going to see between using KMS or custom key store in the actual activity of their network traffic or slowness of their application. You do have, however, that extra traffic going to the HSM that you could end up being charged for. So it can get expensive. Just kind of keep an eye on how things are going, how much traffic you're using. And one thing to keep in mind is that HSMs are only scalable horizontally, not vertically, which means I can have 30 HSMs in a cluster, or I think the limit is 28. 28 HSMs in a cluster, I can still only store the max amount of keys. So if an HSM allows you to store 4,000 keys, doesn't matter if I have 10 or if I have 20 in a cluster, I can still only have that max number of keys. The only way to get more room and have more keys stored is to create an entirely new cluster. So no scaling vertically, only horizontally. The horizontally allows you to handle traffic and reduce latency, but doesn't give you more room to store more keys. And custom key store can only be backed by one cluster at a time. So you cannot add more than one cluster to a KMS key to increase all of your key storage. So what happens is when you create this custom key store, there's a specific user created on the HSM called the KMS user. This KMS user is what KMS uses to maintain a constant connection to the HSM and that's how it creates its keys and that's how it uses those keys for all of its operations. You as another user, if you were to log into that HSM, you don't have access to those keys. Only the KMS user does and it doesn't share those keys with anybody. It uses them specifically for the service. So you would have to generate other keys if you wanted to use them with different applications. Um, the same goes for customers that want to differentiate their keys. They have one key specifically for EBS. They have one key specifically for RDS, one for S3. If you do that, you're going to end up with three CMKs that are all connected to the same Cloud HSM cluster and you're going to have multiple routes back and forth depending on which service you're using and the traffic going to the HSMs. So just something to kind of think about. Now, then you get into the part of, do you really, really need it? Do you need to have the ability to fully manage that HSM? Is it important? Must you be able to log in? Must you be able to manage all of the users on there, specifically from a user? Do you need the ability to have the logging that comes with it? Because HSMs do output logging to audit logs and uh, CloudWatch logs. APIs used to create HSMs, create clusters, all of that's logged in CloudTrail. There is very minimal quorum authentication. You can right now use quorum authentication to create or delete users, which means I can say I must have two admins agree to allow me to create or delete a user. It does not have quorum authentication for keys. So right now as a user, I can log in and create as many keys as I want. I can share them with other users if I want. I have the op option of creating specific parameters when I create them, marking them as non-exportable, all of that. So it's a really good thing to have if you absolutely need it. A lot of the majority of customers that really like this HSM idea, a lot of it is really ooh shiny. They do some Google research, they talk to a few people, and they find out that they have to have this HSM. Their security team tells them it must be FIPS 140-2 level three. Has to be level three validated. So they just go with it. They don't bother to ask why. Why does it have to be level three? What options of level three? 
FIPS is really 140-2. It's all about the physical security of your HSMs. It's all about making sure that nobody can get into a data center, physically take out your HSM box, pry it open and get to your data. So it's about making sure, you know, the locks are on the doors, they have badge scanning, they have biometric scanning, they have physical guards, they have guards on the box itself to make sure if it's tampered with that it will self-destruct. You know, think of Inspector Gadget or Get Smart. It's just going to self-destruct whenever someone messes with it. So there's no prying it open with a screwdriver. There's no poking cables in left and right. It's just going to kill itself and it's going to take all of the data with it. So when it comes to FIPS, there are certain options they may need when it comes to that security aspect, but they don't have to have all of them. And in reality, when you start talking to them about 140-2 level two, and then the partial level three that KMS has, it typically meets all of their security requirements. It meets the physical security, it meets the data security, meets the network security. There's just a few things missing, but I've worked with some banks back and forth and a lot of them after talking through what the actual um, level options are that KMS has, their security teams have been okay with allowing them to use KMS. You know, and in the future, KMS is actually going for 140-3 validation. So in the future, it might not even matter that they only have certain level three validations right now under 140-2. So when it really gets down to it, you've got to really talk to your customer. Find out what their actual needs are. Is it a security requirement from their organization? Are they going to have some leniency? Are they going to allow you to really upsell the benefits of using regular KMS over an HSM backed key store? And those are important questions that you really need to get through to your customer and have them talk to their security teams about. Offer to go on a phone call with them. Talk about these yourself. If you're not comfortable, find a KMS expert or an HSM expert willing to walk through it with you. Because honestly, the bottom line is customer obsession. We're here to do this for our customers, make sure they have the best option available, but also for the best cost. We're not here to sell them stuff that they don't need when there's other services that will benefit them and work much better for their, uh, their workflow. So you just kind of got to think of those questions, you know, do they have compliance do they have regulatory requirements? Is this something you're not going to be able to get past? Why don't they think KMS will work? What is it they have in their head that rejects KMS as an option? Do they really want to pay that much money? Remember, $12, $64,000. That's not including the API usage. So think about cost. Think about savings, especially if you want to go over more than one region. You know, do they want to really take on the responsibility of managing those HSMs? It's overhead. It's management overhead. You have to delegate a team to make sure that you're keeping track of the HSMs in your cluster. If any go down, you need to investigate why the HSM went down. If one of them didn't spin back up. Because like I said, HSM has automated refurbishment, I guess you could call it. If one of them goes down, we're going to try and spin one back up automatically for you. But it's a computer. Things don't always happen the way they're supposed to. Do you want to investigate that? Do you want to open the ticket to premium support to investigate that? Do you want to work with your TAM to figure it out? KMS, you don't have that worry. It automatically spins up. You never even know an HSM failed because we take care of the backups. We take care of the redundancy. We take care of the high availability. You don't have to. Is the customer succumbing to the ooh shiny syndrome? Trust me, I know about all about ooh shiny. I have all the toys, gadgets you could think of. My worst is Legos, tons of Legos, but it's ooh shiny. I get how customers can see that and be like, I need to have this new technology. It's your job to talk to them about it and make sure that they're not succumbing to ooh shiny 
and that their wallets are getting dinged for it. And, you know, would you rather let AWS handle it or do you want to handle all the hard stuff? It's the same thing back and forth. You know, who do you want to trust to manage it? We can take care of everything for you. It's completely managed. You don't have to worry about your PKI infrastructure. Or you can manage it all and have another team that does solely that, which a lot of customers do when they have those regulatory compliances. And the most important question is, do you really want that cookie? I want the cookie. But again, I have Ushiny syndrome. So I hope after all of this, you've got a little more information about KMS, a little more information about HSM, why both of them work for specific workloads, and a little bit more information to talk to your customer about which options will work best for them, which will be most cost effective, which will benefit their use case more, and ultimately which one is going to help us help them succeed in what they wanna do. So I hope you've enjoyed the session. Um, as always, my favorite quote from Dr. Seuss, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. That includes KMS or Cloud HSM. Have a good day.